Stop creating crisis for state governors, Femi Falana warns federal government, as Mieti Ala asks the federal government to stop state governors from enacting the anti-open grazing law. Plus, the 9th of September every year is observed world over as International Day to protect education from attack. And a special report shows that Kanu Akwaibom, eight other states, housed the most of Nigeria's out-of-school children. We'll be talking about that because this is Plus Politics and I am Mary Anna Human rights lawyer Femi Falano has asked the federal government to allow the state government to decide the livestock policy. He urged the federal government to desist from creating problems for states with the grazing reserves policy that it's embarking upon. Meanwhile, Mieti Ala Cattle Breeders Association of Nigeria on Monday asked the federal government to stop state governors from enacting the anti-open grazing law. Well, joining us to discuss this is public affairs analyst Ambrose Igboke, legal practitioners Chris Itamunola and Tamano Williams. Thank you very much, gentlemen, for joining us. Good evening. Thank you very much. Good evening, Am. All right. So I'm going to start with the lawyers in the house because um, there are some legal issues in the middle of all of this. First and foremost, critics have asked why the federal government is insistent on bringing back um, a clause in a law that was, you know, enacted sometime in the 60s. And if it actually does have a place in today's world, which is 2021. So I'll start with you, uh, Mr. Tamano Williams. Uh, do you think that the government can bring that 1968, um, if I'm not mistaken, or 63 law uh, about grazing um, roots back into a 1999 law, which is a constitution as amended? Does it, is it even realistic in the first instance? Mr. Williams, can you hear me? All right, we'll toss the question to Tamunola, then we will try to get um, Tamunola Williams to make his input. Mr. Tamunola, can you go with that? Well, um, up to 1978, when the Land Use Act came into effect, um, the, pa the powers, you had the North, you had the Western region and the Eastern region. And of course, when you talk about the um, Northern region, uh, but that's what com culminated ultimately into the 19 states. Of course, in 1978, you now have the Land Use Act. And uh, the consequence of it is uh, um, uh, vesting the, the, very, the, the various lands in, in, in the states, in the, in the respective gov governors of the states. So uh, one, one fact is certain, and that is that if we have to move on as a, as a country, we've got to know where the right of one particular, um, where the right of the federal government starts and where it ends. And the federal government must recognize that what we have is intended to be a, a, a federalism. But are we actually practicing that federalism? The answer is no. Because the basis of it is where this is, uh, where the challenge is coming is because the federal government is imposing its authority. Uh, 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 on the on the various states, not recognizing that the states definitely have a power, and the president definitely has his own challenge in this particular case, especially where the uh, 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 both north and south, in this case, where the, the 19 states and the southern states have come together to to, uh, to state that what you are doing, federal government is wrong, what is needed. It's not grazing, but at least in each of the states for the for the respective states to determine what will happen to them, and that's where the conflict is definitely uh, uh, coming. Ra ranching uh, uh, as against the grazing. Okay, I hope that we have gotten Tamano back because I want to ask him a, a question, Mr. Williams. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you very clearly. Perfect. Okay, so Femi Falana uh, has said that the federal government never created grazing routes uh, and has no business reviewing them. 
What are your thoughts on that? Because uh, Mr. Tamanola has given us a background as to what the 1978 law uh, on, on um, you know, Land Use Act is I saying. Yes. yes. So quickly, um, do you think that the, Mr. Falana is correct in terms of not the federal government not creating grazing rules and has no powers to review them? Uh, very simply, I agree on all fours with uh, my Lenox senior, uh, Barista Tamnala, and then uh, Falana to, to some extent agree with him. But we must note that there was a grazing law before, and that law became extinct pursuant to the enactment of the Land Use Act. Okay, Now, by virtue of the provision for the Land Use Act, every land in the state is held in trust by the, by the governor for the benefit of the people. And uh, grazing, ranching, these are private businesses. So essentially, I do not see the, the necessity why the federal government should take upon itself the responsibility of determining how businesses will be done. Uh, the, the best that will have happened will have been to engage the, the states you know, and see if grazing or the, the use of beef or the sale of beef how best it can be done for economic purposes. We just look at other countries like, like America, which is a federal state, you know. Even back to Benin Republic, which is uh, uh, not, a, not a federal state, these businesses are private businesses. It's just the peculiar nature of Nigeria and our, our uh, a peculiar way of thinking. So essentially, grazing is a business. Ranching is a business. It's not the duty of state or federal government to go and impose. That is my, my take on the matter. Quickly, Mr. Igboke, why do you think the federal government is still insistent? Because these two learned gentlemen are telling us that it's unnecessary. But the federal government seems pretty insistent. And now we have this, um, you know, policy that they're coming up with again. Uh, why do you think that the federal government is mostly concentrated on this issue? The Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria designates the powers and uh, barriers of uh, each tier of government. When you come to the exclusive list, the federal government is in charge of that. I mean, things like uh, aviation, uh, things like the military, defense, uh, territorial integrity, and some of those things. Even uh, mining, which is supposed to be not a, an exclusive list, is still there. And that is why we are having issues economically where uh, uh, federal government is mining uh, natural resources that in state. They have not been effectively able to do that. A lot of the things the federal government has in the exclusive list have not been done very well. Now they are trying to bite more than can chew by, you know, going into what is in the, um, I I into the other list of the uh, uh, state government that can do. For example, the issue of uh, the land. And that is why in every state, the person who authorizes like what we call a certificate of occupancy, C of O, is vested in the uh, in the uh, governor of the, the state. House, a motion number. Go ahead. Before the, 19, uh, before the nineteen to create laws about their land, and that is why the northern region that time created what they had the the grazing routes for in the northern region of the country only. We did not dovetail into other parts of the country. The, the Midwest had their own. The south, south, uh, north, eastern region had their own. And uh, the later, the middle bed. So uh, I don't know where this thing is coming from, where people are insisting there was another, uh, there was a grazing route. There was no grazing route. The only grazing route that we had was the northern part, the northern region of the country. And that was about taking uh, I think that um, we're having connection issues there with the Ms. Igboke. Um, Ms. Igboke, can you hear me? Of, uh, the economic, in terms of the economic potential of, in terms of the economic potential of, uh, of uh, ranching, there are so many economic potentials in ranching. For example, the dairy products, the leather products that will come from it. We are not even looking at that, but we are only talking about meat, meat, meat. Rank, uh, grazing only causes, uh, gives you meat and, you know, brings about the destruction of farmland, brings about killing, sacking of communities, and all kinds of problems that cause for us in this country. When we do ranching, for example, we are not only harnessing the meat from, from the cattle, we are also harnessing the leather processing will come on board, the dairy industry will come on board, 
and there are so many ancillary services when it comes to dairy and others. Even the uh, the, the cow bones, you can use it for uh, bone powder. There's a lot. There's a lot of uh, you know uh, ancillary services that can come from ranching, and that is the value sure value chain, value additions. You know when you come to uh, uh, ranching. Therefore, the what the government should be. Uh, somebody was arguing. I mean, Falano was arguing that why would the government give six point two billion naira to Casino State to do ranching while it's trying to open uh, uh, grazing routes in other states? So that it, it doesn't uh, go well for uh, the present reality of how agricultural practices should do. Even the Federal Minister of Agri has talked about good agro agricultural practices. And uh, we're talking about agricultural transformation agenda and all kinds of things to be able, for Nigeria to be able to key into uh, the global cultural practice, uh, modern cultural practices of uh, agriculture. And that is the only way to, to go. Even the livestock, national livestock transformation uh, policy of the government also encourages uh, ranching. Therefore, the federal government should not be at odds with itself. Uh, should be focused more and see how we can go with uh, ranching and encourage state governors to see how they can invest in ranches and bring people, investors, to be part of that business. Uh, and, and in talking about um, dealing with state governors, and back to you, Mr. Tamanola, why is it more, why do we see more of federal government releasing press statements and giving orders uh, instead of having some form of a round table with state governors as to addressing this issue of um, open grazing and, of course, how they can chat a way forward. Instead of what we're seeing, we see more of press releases, we see more of political statements. Uh, uh, it's either the federal government is saying that the governors, Southern Governors Forum, um, what their position is more political, they're trying to make the federal government look bad, and, and all of the other things that are happening. What, what is stopping the federal government and states to sit on a table to have this conversation if we know, like you all have said, that this will bring a better outcome? That is if everybody is in agreement, by the way. That's, where, that's precisely where the problem lies. Uh, the federal government has got to recognize that there is a constitution that rules uh, the nation and that the federal government is the federal government and the state governments are the state governments. And of course, the foundation, what the federal government has succeeded in, in doing so far within a particular period of time is to breed suspicion. Under normal circumstances, and ideally, there shouldn't have been a, a fuse, whether it is ranching, whether it is a grazing. But for every policy you bring up, you know, uh, people, uh, uh, whether it's the federal government, whether it's the advisors, whether it's the state or the advisors and whatsoever, somewhere along the line, rather than to look at the issues, parties are encouraged, you know, to, to look behind and um, to be suspicious. And on the basis of that, for example, now, um, you want to talk about equality. You know, you have uh, security challenges in the north, you have security challenges in the south. Mr. Tamanola, can you hear me? Are you still there? Yes, I'm there. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Yes, the important thing is these hatsmen have been, I mean, you, are, are, are acting like terrorists. And while they are acting as terrorists, it's the law. Of the, of, the, of, the, of the Federation, bringing them to order in, in relation to how you have expected yourself to react or how you have, you have reacted in terms of other issues like uh, security challenges that are coming from the East. Yeah, but when, you say, but when you say all these herdsmen are acting like terrorists, all the herdsmen are not necessarily terrorists. It's just that there are a group of people who I, I, I are please, hiding I behind, te I you beg, know, I herders to be to I act, I beg, I beg acts of terrorism. They're I not all terrorists, pardon. are they? I beg, I beg your pardon. I would draw that, the use of that word. The important thing is some of them have given an impression that they are terrorists. I mean, you go about with guns. I mean, the, the lifestyle of hatsmen had been there before 1978. It had been there even in the 80s. It had been there even in the early 90s. How come it is that it is now that this is done? And how many, irrespective of whether you are coming from the north, south, or east, and you, once you violate the law, is there an assurance, a guarantee well, to the states, to, to the individuals, to the persons that 
there is, there is definitely going to be law to be able to penalize in that particular situation. I think this is the, the, the trust of the matter. Um, Ms. Iboke, uh, an interesting thing to note is that Mieti Ala is calling for the federal government to put a stop to states trying to outrightly ban open grazing. Now, on the other hand, governors of at least 17 states uh, in the south have already okayed the ban on open grazing. I think Benue State was the first state um, in the country to even enact this law in the first instance because of what they were experiencing. And now southern state governors have taken that position. Although the Imo state governor has recently withdrawn and decided that he, you know, he's not going to go with it. So that means it's a minus one. Um, but Mieti Allah, on the other hand, asking that governments, um, federal government put a, an end to this ban, sort of. Um, does it mean that Mieti Allah is saying that it's okay for cattle rustling, which is also happening to members of the association, to continue? Are they also saying that it's okay for people to be killed and farmlands destroyed, crops and food produce destroyed in the name of herdsmen or people, uh, uh, cattle trying to graze? Are they saying that they're okay with bandits hiding behind um, herders to cause the kinds of commotion and the killings and abductions that we're seeing on a daily basis? Is this what Macburn is asking for? I think Mieti Ala Cattle Breeders Association of Nigeria, Macburn, um, should tread more softly. Uh, they have started constituting themselves as parallel governments in Nigeria. They are just about a, 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 a union, an association of uh, people who are trading in cattle. I don't know why they see themselves as, uh, as uh, being a parallel government, dishing out instructions. Mr. Boko, can you hear me? Are uh, you still there? Weaponizing some uh, acts. Of, yes, I'm still here. Can you hear me? Yes, we lost you for a minute, but Can go you hear ahead. Me? Go ahead. Yes. So I so, so, so I don't see why Magban CC itself. Are, so, so I don't see why Magban CC itself as a, uh, in an association that is a, a that is an alternative government. Uh, the way they talk, the way they uh, you know their utterances in the past, the way they challenge constituted authorities in different states. I mean, cause for concern. They are not bigger than the constitution of Nigeria. Magban is not bigger. Therefore, Magban should submit itself to constituted authority and stop uh, constituting uh, alternative or parallel government to itself. Um, they, they have their personal opinion. The Magban can say whatever they want to say, but the laws of the land must be obeyed. And uh, the laws of the land vests the, uh, uh, the authority of whatever to do the land with the government and the state. Therefore, if the state says that the a, a law passed by a state houses of assembly says that there is no open uh, grazing in, in, in a particular state. It must be obeyed by, all, uh, by, by Magban. Magban cannot on its own say that it will not obey a law passed by the state. That is a call for anarchy. That is a call for uh, chaos in, 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 our, in our country. That is a call for disobedience and flagrant disobedience of the constitution. Therefore, Magma should submit itself to the positions of the state's House of Assembly all over the country that have enacted anti-open grazing law. They should rather sit down with the uh, state, talk to their members, to embrace the new form of, uh, of, uh, of modern uh, uh, cattle rearing, which is, uh, uh, you know, ranching, and also see, make their members see the benefit of it. And they can also take a tour to countries uh, where, where things are, uh, where, where Frisland, for example, uh, in Denmark and other countries, in Europe and other countries that are doing very well with uh, ranching. And they're ranching, they can also take some South Africans came last time to Quara State to do some, uh, uh, some agriculture uh, practices, which includes uh, uh, ranching. Uh, when uh, I think uh, uh, Dr. Musala Salaki was governor there. And by now, the thing has grown exponentially. They can go to Quara State there and take a look at what uh, ranching is doing. So, uh, Magban should submit itself to constitutional authority as they cannot uh, uh, disobey a state law, whether they are backed by the federal government or not. Nigeria is a constitutionally run country, and citizens must obey no matter who you are. Um, Mr. Williams, going forward, because we're almost wrapping this conversation up. Um, 
Many have pointed to ranching as the solution to the problem. If we must be able to fish out the people who are um, hiding behind the guise of, you know, um, nomads to perpetrate violence and destroy farmlands that cause all kinds of mayhem. Um, but what are the other ways that we can deal with the political issues? Because this seems a bit more... It is a sensitive issue, we all know, but it's a bit more political. And how do we tear off that political um, you know, lining from off this conversation so that we can deal with the real issues going forward? Well, uh, essentially, you have to be historical in the sense that uh, you remember we returned to Democratic 1999 and Obasanjo was uh, then the president. Uh, not too long, we had the issues of uh, uh, the IYC, the, the jaw agitations, you recall. The jaw agitation, resource control and all that. It culminated with issue of amnesty. And then uh, we had some measure of peace in the Niger Delta. And then thereafter, you remember, uh, most of movement for the uh, Igbo people. Uh, at a point, it came down when Jonathan became president. And then when Buhari came, the issue of uh, IPOP came. Now, if you look at it critically, all these issues, the way forward is political. Now, why is it political? We must exist as a state under uh, a rule of law. And then rule of law will essentially come when you engage, people come together to talk, define what policies, what type of government that they want. So this is economical in the sense that we need to come together and look at how best can we develop our country. And we do that by basically coming to know that the various people of Nigeria want some measure of autonomy, you know, like going back to the... I think we lost you there, Mr. Williams. Are you back with us? Can you hear me? I think we lost um, Mr. Williams in closing, um, but I want to quickly see if we can um, get a closing remark from Mr. Itamanola. Can you quickly just wrap this up for us? Well, um, in a statement, Nigeria, in a sentence, rather. Nigeria is, a, Nigeria is a very wonderful country, and what makes us unique is that we are united in diversity. And um, what the federal government should do is uh, to tread softly, um, uh, uh, negotiate with the federated states, and ensure that this uh, peaceful harmony, uh, coexistence, could be able to be. Okay. No matter what we are, we need the north, we need the south, we need the east, we need everybody. And um, the uh, politics or no politics, we should ensure that the best things work out for us. Thank you. All right. Well, I want to say thank you to you, Tamano, Tamano Williams, Chrissy Tamanola, both are legal practitioners, and Ambrose Iboke is a political analyst. Thank you so much, gentlemen, for being part of this conversation. We appreciate it. Thank you very much. All right. Well, we'll take a short break, and when we return, we'll talk about the issues of out-of-school children and how safe are these schools for our children in 2021. Stay with us.